Astronomy GCSE Topic 14, The Life Cycle of Our Sun. There are quite a few videos about this on YouTube, but this one is aimed at Astronomy GCSE. This is what we need to know. The Life Cycle of Our Sun. We'll start with some facts about our Sun now, which I will refer to later on. Our Sun is a main sequence star. If you don't know what that means, you need to watch my video about HR diagrams. Uh, it's a yellow dwarf. Its classification is G2. It's a G2 type star. It's about 5 billion years old and it'll be on the main sequence for about another 5 billion years. So it's middle aged. It's in the middle of its life. By mass, it's about 71% hydrogen. Uh, about 27% helium and about a couple of percent other bits and pieces. The most important thing about our Sun at the moment is that it is balanced, it is stable and it hasn't always been stable and it won't be stable in the future as we shall see. Our Sun comes from a nebula. This picture here, this is the Orion Nebula and there's an awful lot of stars get born in there. There is a stellar nursery in the Orion Nebula. It's a giant cloud of dust and gas left over after a huge star exploded. It's left over after a supernova. So basically the dust and gas that formed our solar system used to be part of a much, much bigger star. And what happens is that turbulence in the nebula causes pockets of gas to swirl around, eddy currents in these pockets of gas, and they will start to get being pulled together by gravity. Gravity will pull these pockets of gas together. It may be initiated by a shock wave from another supernova, apparently. So a protostar will form. It's not quite yet a star because nuclear fusion hasn't started yet, but it will do. Uh, over the next 100,000 years or so, gravity pulls these gases inwards and they swirl around and they will form a disk, which will eventually become the sun and the solar system. Uh, pressure in the protostar is getting bigger and bigger. Temperature is getting bigger and bigger. It's getting hotter and hotter and hotter. And eventually when it's hot enough, then nuclear fusion will start and the star will switch on and it will become a main sequence star. This is our sun at the moment. There's forces pulling inwards, which is gravity. Gravity always pulls inwards. And then there are forces due to the nuclear fusion pushing outwards. And we call this radiation pressure pushing outwards. Our sun is basically an atom bomb exploding. And it's been exploding for five billion years. A nuclear fusion bomb, an atom bomb, an A-bomb exploding. And it will do this for about 10 billion years. It will stop being stable when the hydrogen in the core runs out. And when the hydrogen in the core runs out, a few things are going to happen. Firstly, the core will collapse and become a lot smaller and a lot hotter. And then fusion will spread outwards. Uh, before this, fusion was just happening in the core. Now fusion will spread outwards into a shell surrounding the core. So deeper or rather further out inside the star, fusion is happening and the star will blow up like a balloon. It will get much, much, much bigger. It will become a red giant. When I say it gets much, much bigger, when it's a red giant, its radius will be about one AU. And that means basically the Earth is going to get gobbled up by the sun. We'll all be dead by then anyway, because the sun has got hotter and hotter and hotter and the earth will be well frazzled by then. But anyway, it'll stay a red giant for about 100 million years. Then it will pulsate for a while. It will pulsate shedding layers of dust and gas out into space. 
it will get bigger and cool down and then shrink and then get hotter and then expand and cool down and shrink and get hotter it will pulsate it will become a variable star shedding its layers until eventually you're just left with the core on its own this process will last about 20 million years and we will be left with a planetary nebula okay so this cloud of dust and gas and in the middle there will be the exposed core the core all by itself and that is called a white dwarf a white dwarf is very hot very very dense it's like the mass of a star condensed into the size of the earth it's incredibly dense the white dwarf can't collapse any further and this is due to something called electron degeneracy pressure pushing outwards basically at GCSE level this is because electrons don't like to be that close to each other and so you can't squish electrons too close together very easily okay because basically they repel each other there is a limit to how close you can get uh, at least for the Sun there is and it's called the Chandrasekhar limit the Chandrasekhar limit is the the limit that a white dwarf can be in terms of how small it can get due to this electron degeneracy pressure if it had a bigger mass then it could collapse further because gravity would be stronger uh, so we are left with this white dwarf it will take trillions of years to cool down and eventually it will become a dark cold thing called a black dwarf and there aren't any black dwarfs because the universe isn't old enough the universe is only about 13.8 billion years old so it's not old enough for any black dwarfs to exist yet 